This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation, specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e-learning to instructor-led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. The ISTG has really more than one function, and one of its other functions is to manage bridgehead servers. These are the servers that are responsible for replicating across the site links. And the ISTG does this dynamically. Uh, the designated bridgehead server for a site has numerous responsibilities. It's going to replicate all the changes from bridgeheads in other sites. It is going to be pulled for changes by bridgeheads in other sites. And it can be configured as a preferred bridgehead server instead of the automatic selection. Now the reasons for doing this is most likely firewall considerations or performance considerations. Uh, firewall, we may just limit, we want to limit communication outside of our network, uh, especially as it relates to Active Directory replication to a single machine. And so I want to make sure that it's always with this machine uh, or these two machines, so I set them up as preferred bridgeheads. Those also might be my most capable domain controllers. Uh, we didn't mention, but intersite replication uses a compression uh, mechanism. And so there's compression, decompression going on. It's a little bit more of a performance hit than you would have with intrasite replication. So possibly uh, those performance considerations as well. So basically, it's just responsible for replicating all information between sites and now we're just determining do we want it to be automatic uh, automatically chosen or do we want to manually cho choose it so if you modify the default behavior you do want to keep in mind uh, that you be sure and select at least two bridgehead servers for each site because as the ISTG is set up to to do this automatically it works really well. If one of the bridgehead servers is down, then it just chooses another bridgehead, assuming there are two domain controllers in each site, which there should be. Okay, But if you manually set up preferred bridgeheads, then you are limiting the ISTG's choices to your preferred list. So just always at least do two if we're going to set up the preferred list. Now, by default, all site links are considered transitive. Uh, that means the ISTG is going to assume that you have full network connectivity in your network and it's going to create connection objects automatically with this in mind. Uh, so site A, site, site A is connected to site B and site B is connected to site C. So the ISTG will assume that it can create connection objects from domain controllers in site A to domain controllers in site C, even though they are not directly connected. That's what we mean by a transitive site link. And that works in a lot of situations and, and it's not a big problem, but in larger, more complex networks, this might not be desired. And administrators can disable this bridging site links option. It's basically a, uh, just a, a single checkbox. What that'll do is it'll force the ISTG to only create connection objects for directly connected sites uh, and their domain controllers. Now, I may have certain situations, again, this is for more complex networks, so we're probably dealing with a large number of sites, and I may have some sites that can be considered transitive while other sites should not. So I, I have to disable the bridging of all site links, and then I'll have a new component called a site link bridge. The site link bridge can be created to link together multiple site links that should be considered transitive. Uh, and so, you know, again, this gets fairly complex because we're dealing with larger enterprise networks. Uh, I would say that in, most ca in many cases, this does not need to be done unless you have a large number of sites. In fact, you don't want to disable the bridging of all site links because it's going to cause you more work. Okay? But to give us a better understanding of exactly how this works, uh, I want to take a, a look at the whiteboard because I think looking at it as we talk about it will uh, help. So we're going to take a look at this concept of site links being bridged versus disabling that and then using the site link bridge option.